Great God evening, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome to Totally Whole. I am your host, Pastor Bridget. And again, let me thank Dr. Rosemary Cook for this opportunity to uh, host uh, the radio show on tonight. Let me uh, thank you also for tuning in uh, to the show. I want to uh, let you know that I am indeed appreciative. Now, let me ask you to do me a favor and help me out here. Text a friend, a foe, yeah, a foe, uh huh, definitely considering what we're going to be talking about tonight, or a family member and invite them to tune in to Totally Whole Radio Talk Show. We're going to look at uh, a topic forgiveness on tonight, 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 tonight. So uh, let me open up with a question. Let me open up with a question. How do you see forgiveness? How do you see forgiveness? Is it hard for you uh, to ask for forgiveness? Is that something difficult for you to do? Because I know for some people asking for forgiveness is just as hard as uh, forgiving someone. Uh, So uh, if you had to draw a picture of forgiveness, what would it look like? What would it look like? What would it look like? So um, let's let's have some, some real talk for just a moment here. And I know I'm a witness to, to this, to, as to what I'm about to say to you. Have you ever felt like before you would forgive, you'd rather kick and scream and curse someone out and just tell them where they can get off and what they can do and how far it would take for them to go where they need to go? Do you, I'm, I'm talking some real talk, some real talk, some for real people. If you felt like just putting somebody in their place and twisting them up like a pretzel, uh-huh, uh-huh, and telling them what's really on your mind or putting on some boxing gloves uh, uh, before you would forgive them. And, I, and, I, and I'm throwing it out, I'm throwing it out because that is some that, that is some of the places where you and I have been. Uh, some of us would rather, before we would say, I, you know, I forgive you, we'd rather go through all of those things before we ask, actually uh, would be ready and willing to forgive, okay? And so uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, what is forgiveness about? What What is this thing called forgiveness about? When, when was the last time uh, you had to forgive someone? Or, or, or when was the last time you had to ask someone to forgive you? And one of the things I find interesting when talking about forgiveness is how people often uh, uh, like to deflect uh, from their own responsibility in this thing called forgiveness by focusing on someone else's wrong or bad behavior. Uh, the other thing I find interesting is how people try to dictate when and how long it should take for someone else to forgive. Uh, uh, they try to tell somebody how long they should, you know, how long it should take and, 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 and before they can forgive someone. So what is forgiveness about Um I read somewhere that where it, where it says that forgiveness is an act of the will. The will is the, is an act of the will. It is a decision that you and I make. Uh, 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 it is also an act of mercy and grace. So, with that said, uh, let uh, me say I'm so glad to have joining us this evening, Pastor Ava Gaines. As my special guest, she has been in ministry for over 28 years. Uh, She has a B.A. degree in political science from the University of uh, Texas at Dallas and a master's degree of theological studies from Perkins School of Theology uh, at Southern Methodist University. Pastor Ava is an ordained elder in the AME Church and has been blessed to form uh, blessed to pastor, rather, uh, um, from as far east as Philadelphia to as far west as Anchorage, Alaska. My God, she, she's she been some places. She is the author of The Daughters of Z 
and the founder and pastor of Messiah Temple Worship Center. And and before we uh, before we uh, close the show uh, t- uh, tonight, uh, Pastor Ava is going to tell us a little bit about uh, what that book is all about, uh, The Daughters of Z. Uh, so, Pastor Ava, welcome, welcome to Totally Ho. It's a pleasure. Having thank, you thank you, Pastor Bridget. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored and privileged uh, to be on the show tonight. God bless. God bless. Wonderful. So, Pastor Ava, we're going to just dive right into our discussion on tonight. And um, so I want to start off by asking you, what do you believe forgiveness uh, what, what is what is forgiveness? What do you believe forgiveness is about? What what do you believe? Do you believe that forgiveness is is always instantaneously, and, or uh, do you believe that it's a process? Um, can forgiveness be used as a weapon for good or bad? Uh, what say you about this thing called forgiveness? Okay, God bless. Um, let me let me start off by by saying this. Um, you know, I, I have had some uh, horrible things done to me um, by uh, uh, my father, uh, by people in the church, by by church leaders. And, you know, you were, I was listening to you and, you know, you were very diplomatic and saying that, okay, well, before I, I forgive, you know, I've you know, let me get this person told, or you know, do, do I cuss them out? You know, but my um, my my thing was a little stronger. Um, you know, I was like, okay, now before I forgive, now uh, if I uh, uh, go by and blow their car up, uh, 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 how much prison time w- w- would I get? You know, and uh, because you know, I I have been so enraged and so furious as to, you know, what has been done to me and, and the things that people have said about me and, and, and whatnot. So for me, um, early on, even in ministry, um, you know, having experienced, um, you know, the, the, the works of, uh, you know, evildoers, uh, for me it was a process to try to forgive. Um, you know, uh, granted, it didn't come overnight, um, uh, I remember vividly uh, actually holding a grudge um, against a group of people. I held that grudge for almost two years, um, you know, before I finally decided that, you know what, okay, uh, in order for me to move forward with uh, the calling and the gifts that God has placed upon my life, I got to let this thing go. Um, mm. so, um, so, so, so forgiveness um, for some, can be a process. You know, I, I have pastored folks, you know, down through the years, and, you know, and they, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, share with me out of the, uh, uh, the the bosom of their heart, Pastor, um, you know, this is what has happened to me, you know, and, and actually, and I, I have sat there uh, across the table and listened to them for almost an hour and a half, you know, just expound on what was done, who did it, and, you know, and, and, and the nature that it was done and what and how it has affected them. You know, before I even said one word, you know, and, uh, you know, they would say, but, Pastor, I'm going to say this. You don't know how bad it hurt. And, you know, and you, 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 you'll never know uh, the pain I, I have experienced. But, you know, when I get through listening and, and they get through laying out, you know, their um, – their 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 uh, theses for why they feel like you know they uh, 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 you know need to be bitter and, and justified and in their hatred you know of this person and that person you know I asked him and you know after listening to all of that I said well let me ask you this um, mm-hmm. uh, if, if 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 this person uh, and I said well, I said well um, you plan on uh, going to heaven yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know I, I'm gonna go to heaven I'm gonna go to heaven I said okay let me ask you this. I said, um, you think you'll be able to spend eternity in heaven uh, with the person that, uh, you know, that, that with, with, with a person A? Well, they, they ain't going you to, know, you know, I can't even see God, you know, allowing them. I said, but what if, um, you know, they, 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 they get it right with God and, and confess and, 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 and then they make it to heaven and, and there they are in heaven with you. Um, you going to be all right with that? You know, and then, you know, they, they have to pause and say, 
Well, I said, because remember now, all of this pain and, and, and all of this, this drama and, and, you know, and, and well, what you're dealing with, I said, there ain't going to be none of that in, in heaven. Um, I, I said, so now, what will your position be in heaven if you see them? You know, and then they kind of had to backpedal and, and then think and, and kind of, you know, revisit, um, you know, their whole uh, 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 treatise as to why they're justified in anger and, and holding on and, 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 and having grudges. You know, and I said, can you forgive? Are you willing to forgive? And some people, it, uh, you know, they, 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 they stay mad, but then they say, you know what, okay, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't want this thing over my head. But some people, Pastor Bridget, I have found, for whatever reason, seem like um, because they feel like they're so wounded that they actually feel justified in hanging on to, to anger and to bitterness and refusing to release the perpetrator. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, that, that becomes a dangerous plateau when you have, um, you know, argued with yourself as to why, you know, you feel justified uh, in hanging on and not forgiving, you know, your perpetrator. Because, you know, when, you at the, because when we look at the biblical model of forgiveness, you know, and and if we're gonna, you know, continue to proclaim uh, to be proclaimers of the Christian gospel, then we have to look at uh, what the scriptures say about forgiveness. Well, our yeah. tutor is Jesus, and what did Jesus say? Peter said, "Jesus, now do I forgive my brother or my sister? You know who has offended me? Do I forgive him seven times, and that's it?" And Jesus said, "Well, how about this, Pete?" What about 70 times 7? How about, how about that? You know, so so if, so if so actually Peter was uh, looking on the premises, okay, that, well, you know, um, look, we, we have a format here. We, 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 we forgive him seven times, but, you know, Jesus actually uh, bumps it up. I mean, you know, I mean, really, really takes it up, takes it up, not just seven times, but how about this, 70 times 7. Um, and, of course, and that was just, you know, uh, uh, a kind of a figurative language in to say, okay, look, you forgive your brother and your sister as many times as it's needed. Mm. And for a lot of us, Pastor Bridget, um, we, 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 we can't get there. Um, we, we, we simply can't get there. And for some, you know, it's a slow boat to China. Um, it's a work in process. And, unfortunately, some people never get there. Let me let me say this. I, if I if I can just interject, and you're right because mm-hmm. I if, if I know there there was a time in my life um, when you talk about you know the mod, Jesus model forgiveness for us and following His model and and um, you know even as Christians, um, what what tends to happen um, from my own uh, personal experience. I could I could go to church. I could read that in scripture. Intellectually, I understand that. Mm-hmm. But heart wise, translating that mm-hmm. spiritually was a challenge. Mm-hmm. There was a barrier. There was a blocker. There was something blocking it. There there was something interfering with me being able to uh, 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 take it from the intellect to the heart mm-hmm. and. That's how we get stuck because we can hear Jesus talk about, you know, forgiving and, you know, forgive him seven times, seven, all of that, all of that. We, we mm-hmm. you know, we, we know that, especially those of us who have been in Christ for some years. We, we understand the fact that he said that, um, you know, I forgive you. Therefore, if I forgive you, we, we ought to show the same mercy, right? And mm-hmm. so that's why I opened up. I started talking about that forgiveness is an is an act of grace and mercy. Mm-hmm. But because you know, and and I know I'm not alone in that. I I, I know that other folk who who perhaps are listening may have been there and are still there with this whole forgiveness piece. And you talk mm-hmm. about having a right because I felt that the person. 
um, I held this unforgiveness for. I had a right, and let me tell you something. You talked about you held on to something for two years. Mm-hmm. How about I held on to it all the way until I, I was 30-something years old. It, it started when I was about 19. Mm-hmm. So I was preaching the gospel. Hello. We mm-hmm. we having real talk, right? I was mm-hmm. preaching the gospel. All righty. And so from age 19 to age 35, mm-hmm. actually I was 30, I'm sorry, not 35, 33. Mm-hmm. To age 33, I held on to that thing, and I could see that person, and I would walk by them as if as though I never, ever saw them a day in my life. Now, this is someone mm-hmm. that was very close, Okay. Mm-hmm. But I felt I had a right Mm -hmm. to hold my offender hostage. And guess what? I felt Mm -hmm. good about it. I felt good about it. And so that unforgiveness that I had for that person was something that allowed, and and as weird as it is, as contradictory as it sounds, I felt that that thing gave me power Mm -hmm. over the offense that I that was done. And mm. I nurtured that thing and felt good about it. However, however, it wasn't until a mentor of mine took me through the process of sharing with me the importance of walking this thing out. And that's why I, I, I say on this on this broadcast often Get a piece of paper. Write this stuff down. It wasn't until I began to just write some of this stuff down and really look at myself, look at myself, Mm -hmm. and be true to the God that's in me. To Mm -hmm. see really is the God in me really reflecting. When I look at myself in the mirror, am I really reflecting the true essence of God and his forgiveness? Mm -hmm. And when I came to the realization Bridget, you really aren't. And and that caused unbeknownst unto me because I was, you know, now granted, now granted, I didn't see this person often. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I thought about the person often either. Mm-hmm. However, but when something came up that triggered the memory of that person, it's when the strong feeling mm-hmm. of the offense overcame me. And I could feel the intensity of the hate mm-hmm. that I had for that person. So and that's when what I is. came to a place. That's right, what it is. Absolutely. If we're, if we're, absolutely. If we're true with ourselves, that's what it is. It's hate. Mm-hmm. 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 It was hate. I had mm-hmm. a hate, and, and I and, and and I despised him so much to the place mm-hmm. I wished that he would die. Mm-hmm. Been there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's Been there. how much I could care less about his soul. Mm-hmm. Because I was wrapped up in what I felt mm-hmm. was a justification mm-hmm. for holding on. And the mm-hmm. other thing I want to say, because I did ask the question about, you know, is forgiveness always instantaneous or is mm-hmm. the process? The other thing is I also took in consideration even my own personality, my makeup, because some mm-hmm. people, their makeup is different, right? Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. people, um, even if they're not Christian. They have such a welcoming and embracing kind of spirit, you know. Um, And so they may be quick. They may be a little quicker than others to to forgive. And and if I could, let me kind of like jump to uh, the uh, uh, Charleston Nine, if I may, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Our hearts and prayers uh, go out to those family members. And um, we 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 continue to pray uh, for their healing. 
mm-hmm. um, and as well as that community and indeed um, that church, mm-hmm. e- Mother Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. One of the things that was striking and indeed has caused some great debate throughout the nation is the fact that when the family members were given the opportunity to stand in the court Mm -hmm. and to look at their offender, the murderer of their Mm -hmm. loved one. Mm -hmm. And as we watched on television or or, or was listening on the radio, we heard some of them one by one saying to the the murderer, the killer, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we forgive you and that's you know, right. we pray for your soul right. and and That's all right. of that. And and some some folk were like, My God, how could they do that? Mm-hmm. You know, he, he hasn't even yet been charged with anything. And they're seeing that they forgive. And some folk were judging, well, are they forgiven because because uh uh it was you know, because they they were hearing folk talking about the need for healing and moving on where they prompt to because of what they were hearing in the community and throughout the, the, you know, the radio and the TV, where they somehow coerced, you know, somehow or another or uh, uh, unconsciously aware, you know, that, that was, that's, that's what they were doing. Well, mm. I can't speak what was in their hearts. I can't speak what was in their hearts. And then some folk also said, you know, black folk are conditioned to forgive and just mm-hmm. look at the difference between the white folk who, you know, who stood in court with a young man who was a murderer up there in Boston who bombed, you know, mm-hmm. who set the bombs, and they, you know, they, they had a different response than the black folk did. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. historically, black folk have always been quick to forgive. True. The oppressor, their slave master, I got to go there. That's true. Right? That's so, true. So, but the point is, what was what stood out about these people, and I don't know the history of those who who stood in the courtroom with the with the young man up there in Boston. These people were raised in the Christian tradition, mm. you see, and so perhaps they had gotten to you know perhaps they obviously not perhaps but it's, it, it appears they they had obviously gotten to that place where they were able to transcend. You see, transcend the circumstance of what happened and were able to to tap into a reservoir of love and grace that some of us have not be, have not been able to or not able to do as quickly as they have. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that we must always model forgiveness. And I, and I go back to my own situation with that one individual. That was the only one person that mm-hmm. I have ever held on to unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. And um, I have never, ever, since that time, um, been in a place where I held on to the unforgiveness. And let me say this. It was so wonderful for me to be able to go to that place of healing Mm -hmm. where I could finally, where I could finally release it, release the person, where I could finally let go. And there was something that was so supernatural and overwhelming as much as, as much as it was overwhelming the emotions of what the person did and what what it caused me to feel was the overwhelming presence of God's divine power mm. was even stronger mm. was even stronger so um you know when when we talk about you know is forgiveness always you know instance not always mm. and so sometimes it is a process it is a it's process true. and and so let me ask you this, do you think do you think it's right, especially for those of us who 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 deal you know, deal with counseling and pastoring and, 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 and empowering people, do you think it's right for us to give people their space to process? Or should we yes, carry them I, along? How do you feel? Well 
No, um, because, you know, uh, forgiveness is, is like any other emotion, like anger, like grief. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it's not a quick fix. Um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, you know, as you said, you know, um, we're all different. Um, you know, uh, you know the people uh, who were harmed and who lost loved ones from the Boston bomber, um, you know, were and even though he was given a death sentence, um, you know, and when they came out of that courtroom knowing that he was going to be put to death for his crime, you know, mm-hmm. some of them were saying, you know, I'll never forgive him. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't accept it because he apologized in court. And you know, see now, I'm sorry for the lives that that I that I took. And you know, some of them came out there. Okay, you know, um, I'll never forgive him. You know, I, I don't accept his apology. And then we mm-hmm. see the, the 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 flip side of the coin in Charleston, um, where you know, um, you know, these people haven't even uh, been you know dead a week. You know, and a family member is going to the courthouse, making their impact statement, saying, "I forgive you." You know, may God have mercy. So, so everyone is different. Um, case in point, mm-hmm. my mother, um, and I'm not saying this because she's my mom, but, you know, because it's just who she is as, as a person. She's probably the most forgiving and most passive people I know. Um, like, you know, she, she has, uh, too, suffered at, at the hands of my father and, and you know, and, 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 and has experienced, you know, lies you know, down through the years by, by family members. Um, but my mom, uh, you know, is so quick to just say, you know what, you know, I'm going to pray for that person. You know, I'm going to pray for your dad, and, you know, and, I, and, you know, and I'm going to pray that they make it into heaven. Whereas me, you know, as I shared earlier, that, you know, in, in my two years of holding on and in the two years, I was like, okay, you know, uh, they deserve to die and go to hell. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say this, since we're keeping it real, mm-hmm. I was actually praying, you know, that God would strike them because, mm-hmm. and I would use the scripture because, God, wait, you said in your word right here, touch not my anointed, neither yeah. do my serve my prophet no harm. So, God, mm-hmm. I'm justified in praying and asking you to wreak your vengeance upon them because they mm-hmm. deserve it. Mm-hmm. Praying out of anger praying out of hatred and, you know, not realizing at the time that I, too, you know, praying those type of prayers, I'm, ju- I'm guilty. I'm wrong. But, you know, um, you know, to, to go back, you know, to, to, to answer the, the question, um, you, know, you know, we do need to give people space, um, you know, to, to heal um, because forgiveness, I, I think, is, is, is a healing process, too, and and, and you know, and, I, and me too. I'm, I'm not trying to get into the minds of the uh, uh, the the the, the, uh, the survivors of of the uh, Emmanuel Nine, but you know, I think with uh, some of those who now there was one family member um, who made it clear, you know, with CNN, um, you know, he's not there yet. Um, mm-hmm. He's not ready to forgive, and um, he doesn't know when he'll get there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and and he was actually a family member of one of the other family members who had actually gone to court to make an impact statement and told the killer, I forgive you, mm-hmm. and I'm praying for you, and may God have mercy upon your soul. Um, he was, a, 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 I think, a nephew to one of the, uh, the, to, to the survivor that was actually in court making an impact statement. And he said, I'm not there yet. Uh, I don't know when I'll be there, and I'm not ready to forgive. So uh, I think we as counselors, we as pastors, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, life coaches or what have you, um, you know, when people come to us, you know, with their hurts, their pains, their concerns, you know, and it has to do in the line of forgiveness, um, you know, we can't expect them or demand from them, you know, okay, um, I hear what you're saying, but okay, right now before you leave my office, you got to forgive. Um, We we can't do that. I think that's kind of reckless. Um, I know um, some pastors and some denominations uh, who are kind of rigid in Scripture, you know, kind of, you know, hold that over people's heads to make them do that. Um, But realistically, uh, in a lot of cases, that's not even realistic. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. It, it's it's Amen. not even realistic, um, you know, to even, you know, put a demand, you know, on people who come to us, you know, for counseling, for help, uh, for a pastoral direction. Um, to just, you know, by the time you leave this office, you got to forget because you got to give people time to heal. You got to give them time to, uh, because at the end of the day, um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not making an apology to us, but at the end of the day, that's between them and God. So they'll have to take their all of the pain, the hurt, whatever has been done, and they'll have to take that to God. Okay, and then begin to, you know, make their peace with God concerning um, the actions of their perpetrator or their offender. Um, you know, so, I, yeah, I, I think people need the space to heal. Um, it took you um, 10 years. It took me two. Um, you know, I've known people who, uh, it, who have, uh, it has taken 30 and 40 years, um, you know, to actually, you know, um, uh, actually forgive somebody to relinquish it and let it go. Mhm. Mhm. Good, good, good. Pastor Ava, uh just kinda just kinda picking back on something you had talked about in terms of um it being reckless. Um I believe forgiveness without accountability can lead people to tolerate abuse and injustice. Mm-hmm. And I also believe that accountability without forgiveness uh becomes rigid uh, legalism, empty of empathy and compassion. So I, I piggyback on what you were talking about in terms of, mm-hmm. you know, being rig, rigid and, and reckless, and mm-hmm. reckless, you know. Absolutely, and, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because what, what, what can happen is that we, as opposed to helping people become freer and delivering them and, and, and having them to transition, you know, from bondage, um, mm-hmm. To to a, pl- a space of liberation, um, with that kind of of suggestion and and and, and prompting and, and counseling or whatever you want to call it, um, mm-hmm. it could put a person in deeper, you know, in, in deeper bondage and in, in a, in a that's, deeper that's hold. True. That 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 that's that. true because you know you 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 as the, you know you you as the the counselor the. Uh, the the psychiatrist, the uh, pastor, you know, what have you, um, are kind of, you know, uh, on a higher standard. So, you know, when uh, a patient, clients, you know, uh, parishioners come to you, you know, for, for, for guidance, for counseling, for help, you know, you, know, you have to have accountability um, in the uh, counseling and the advice, um, you know, that, that you're giving, you know, and again, you know, it is, unreasonable uh, to expect someone, um, you know, who had had tremendous, uh, 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 you know, uh, atrocities, if you will, or or offenses, you know, uh, done to them and expect them, you know, when they leave your office, um, you know, to just shake it off uh, as if nothing happened. Um, You you know, then that, 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 and and again, you know, we, we have to allow people um, because even when some of the offenses that we go through, a lot of it, uh, a lot of times, you know, not only is it, you know, uh, you know, we, we, you know, people need to find a, you know, a way to forgive, but a lot of times people are grieving uh, as to what has been done to them. Um, you know, they're actually grieving, and you know, and we know that grieving, you know, it is a process. Um, you know, so, you know, we, we have to, you know, help people, you know, walk it through, um, give them their space. Um, but then, you know, we, we you know, and I, and I know that it can kind of be, you know, a, a tricky balancing act, um, you know, but, uh, you know, give them their space. But then, you know, we don't want them to to uh, to remain that way, um, you know, to uh, to give the offender, to give the perpetrator power um, by them, you know, uh, making a determination that I'll never forgive, you know, um, I, I'll never forgive. So it, 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 at times it can become, a, you know, a fine line and, and a balancing act, and we kind of have to begin to, you know, uh, find that niche to where we can be helpful uh, and the guiding them through the process, um, you know, without um, adding more hurt to it as well. Mm-hmm. And, and let me say this, um, 
what, what Scripture came to mind when, I, when we talk about, um, you know, forgiveness without accountability. Um, mm-hmm. Jesus demonstrated something really beautiful before our, before you know, before us in, in Scripture. Um, because I, I, I do believe, as I stated, that um, there ought to be accountability with forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus said to the woman that was caught in adultery, forgiveness we saw take place. She, he said, mm-hmm. go. You see, he said, mm-hmm. your sins are forgiven. Go and do what? Sin no more. Sin no more. Mm-hmm. You, there is accountability, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So that that's really important to you know important to know and to tell folks. We're I talking mean, about Jesus, forgiveness. Yeah, I mean, Jesus has been the. I mean, I, I don't know a more truer role model um, when it comes to this thing called forgiveness in Christ. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we see it, you know, um, on, on when he was dying on the cross. But, but then again, check this out. Peter, mm-hmm. um, he told Peter, look, you know, you're you going to lie. You know, you're you going to lie, you're going to lie, you're going to lie. Sure did. Um, but but yeah. you know what? And I, 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 Lord, I, you know, Peter lied anyway. But, you know, before Jesus um, went back, um, when, he, when he was crucified, dead, buried, and he rose from again, and he spent the 50 days uh, on earth with his disciples teaching, he, one of the last things, his instructions to Peter, um, still, after, you know, um, Peter lying about even being a part of the fellowship and being a part of his ministry, he still, um, as a, I call it, um, as an act of forgiveness, you know what, man? Uh, I'm going to entrust you to feed my sheep. Hmm. You lied. You cut the man's ear off in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, you know, you, you, you've you been quick-tempered for the, la- for the last three years. But, but you know what? In spite of all of that, Peter, you know, I've already told you that you I'm going to build my church upon, but guess what? Um, even though after the lie, you know, I'm still entrusting you to feed my sheep. Now, Peter, do you love me? You know, and so, you know, even with that, I mean, because, you know, most most of us, like, okay, you know what, you know, if you lie, I'm, you know, we, I, I just don't know if I can trust you again. I mean, you know, right. you've been with right. me all this time, and then, you know, when the heat gets a little thick, you know, just to save your neck, you know, you're going to lie about even knowing me, being a part of the, the fellowship, really? And we That's were, Ava. Peter was a chump. Peter yeah. punked out. Yes, yes. Peter Pong you know, and, 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 and most of us like, okay, you know what, you know, I, I, I need someone that can man up. You know, I don't need no price. Right. So, you know, right. and we, so most of us would have said, okay, you know what, Peter, you blew it. I'm going to have to go to somebody else. You know, nothing personal, right. but, but, but you blew it. But, but Jesus didn't right. do that. Jesus said, you know what, uh-uh, I still, I'm going to still use you. Mhm, mhm, mhm. And, and and let me say this to you. Let me say this to you in terms of Peter being used too, because accountability did come into place because Peter found himself back where he was supposed to be. And That's he right. and you, and remember the day of Pentecost. Who was there? Who was That's there? Right. Peter. Peter. That's and right. Who 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 led a great a great multitude to Jesus? Peter. Peter. Because he understood. Okay, I I, I messed up. You see. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm forgiven. Now I got to be accountable. Mm-hmm. I've been gi- given another now opportunity. Now I have to be accountable. Yep. I need to be where I'm supposed to be in that upper room. Mhm. So I can receive what I need in order to fulfill what was spoken over me That's when right. He said, "Upon this rock." Hello. That's right. Upon this and rock. Pe- and Peter even forgave himself for the lie. He even That's forgave powerful. himself. Yes. yes, he even forgave himself. Yes, yes absolutely so, absolutely mm-hmm. so. Because I know, I know for me, and I think, I thank the Lord God Almighty that he says yes, my yes, thoughts yes. are not like your thoughts. Because you know what? Me and bro- Brother Peter would have been kind of through. We would have been on the out. Yeah, you yeah. Mm-hmm. You know how mm-hmm. we do. Again, we don't always apply the same mercy that was a minister to us. That's that's true. See? That's that's, and that's, so that's because, true. Because again, we 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 have to be true too. We have to be true, and and that's why we have to seek more of God. Because if we don't, mm-hmm. we'll do what comes natural. You see, that's the, we'll cut that's, the that's cord. True. 
Mm-hmm. You see, throw people that, that, away. That's we will. We will. That, that's but, true. Yeah, but, we, 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 yeah, we, we, we are so quick to withhold grace and mercy. Um, you know, I, I, and I, I observed a, a post I put on Facebook last week, um, and um, the 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 first post I put, you know, um, when the killings first happened uh, at Mother Emmanuel, you know, I said, you know, let let's pray, you know, and uh, we believe God, you know, that He's going to just, you know, uphold the survivors, um, and that and that justice would be done in this case. I got so many likes, so many likes. But a few days later, um, when I began to actually pray for the killer, um, pray that he would receive salvation um, and that God would begin to, you know, do a work in his life. Because at the end of the day, you know, he he needs to be saved too. Um, And when I put that, I said, now, um, as we continue to pray for the Charleston uh, survivors and and, and those that have been affected, you know, at the church and in the community um, by these uh, by these killings. Let's not forget to include the killer in our prayers too, because he needs to receive Christ Jesus. He needs salvation, um, and he needs to experience the love of God. I didn't hardly get any in any likes on that. On that, none. Right. 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 None. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because because again, you know, our our first inclination is mm-hmm. to is to throw the stone. You see, and 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 because of the the the, the crime that was done, because of, of the the act that went mm-hmm. into what was committed. You see, mm-hmm. that 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 right there was such a sore spot, a hard place. Yes. Um, yes. You know, for folk to digest. And that's mm-hmm. understanding, you know. That's understanding. Mm-hmm. Right. That's definitely right. understanding. Um, and mm-hmm. so, uh, they too have to work out, you know, their process. Their process. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, you know, we 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 know we we know uh, uh, intellectually reading the book that uh, talks about, you know, praying, you know, for those who despitefully use us and those who hurt us and. Mm-hmm. And loving our enemies, and you know, and and, and mm-hmm. uh, praying for them, we 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 know that, we know mm-hmm. that. But what has to happen? The heart has to connect with the word, so that the word then that's becomes true. living in the heart, and and the transformation that, 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 that's, that takes place. That that that's true. And then, as you say, even with that, you know, it it's it, it's it's a part of our maturity as, as Christians. Now, sure. granted, probably fifteen or twenty years ago. Um, I wouldn't be going to God about nothing about the killer. Um, but yeah. because, you know, I've grown uh, and matured in my Christian walk, I understand him and I can see him the way God sees him, despite mm-hmm. the fact that what he did was so egregious. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, Jesus still loves him just as much as he loves you and me. Um, and it. this man is in need of salvation, and it needs to That's be right. delivered, and he needs to be saved. So That's right. my he, question to me, yeah. So if I don't pray for him, then who will? Mm-hmm. 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 And because, see, because, and, God and, and, because, because if God is concerned uh, just as much as his soul as he is anybody else, this is true. And see, mm-hmm. Pastor Ava and, and those who are listening, I think it's important that you are true to where you are in God. Mm-hmm. That you are mm-hmm. true to where you are in God, and 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 um. You know, again, that we're always stretching mm-hmm. and we're always reaching higher, you understand, to become mm-hmm. more like him. Because um, um, Pastor Bridget uh, uh, is not quite where Pastor Ava is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, Pastor Ava talking, you know, because I, cause I feel some kind of way about that, you know. And, yeah, yeah. and not to say that I don't want him to be saved, but I want... There's a part there's a part of me that want him to to get some suffering and 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 to get some stuff back. Right. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't need to Now I'm not saying he doesn't need to be held accountable right. for his uh, crime. And I'm not saying sure. he no, that he he needs to uh, uh receive whatever the law says is due him for his crime. Sure. That, that sure. And, I, and, I, and I'm all for that, but at the end of the day, sure. you know, um you know, um I have to be concerned as Jesus is about all souls. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I guess yeah. I would, and, and I just, you know, went back to that, to the, to the, uh, the, um, the last, um, 
episode we we had when we talked about um, breaking the chains of, yes. of um, yes. mm-hmm. you know, of, of that whole thing about betrayal, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I, I do know that the Lord, and that's why I said people have to, you know, you have to uh, uh, accept where you are, but a, a, at the same time. Be willing to extend and to grow and to and to um, move forward, and that's why Paul said, "I I I, I reach for the mark of the higher calling." You mm-hmm. see, I know I'm not there yet. I haven't obtained, okay, but I'm reaching. I'm pr- I'm I'm pushing forward. I'm pushing mm-hmm. forward, not to excuse if what you feel is what you feel right. is okay. But that's you know you, you're reaching higher. You're reaching higher. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm I, I brought that up. I brought that up just to say to folk who may feel that way that, you know, God ain't mad with you. Mm-hmm. You see, God ain't That's mad true. with you. And so um, so we, we do pray. We do pray that mm-hmm. his soul gets saved. You mm-hmm. see, we do pray that his soul gets saved. But that the little Amen. rebel comes out of me every now and then, the little radical, <laughs> you know. You know, I ain't going to tell you all what my nickname was growing up. But every now and then that little nickname comes out. It, it comes out. It comes out. But at the end of the day, Pastor Ava, we do want him to be saved. We do. We do pray we that God saved. save his soul and that he doesn't die and go to save. hell. We mm-hmm. do. We do pray that. Amen. 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 We Amen. Yeah, we, we we know he's gonna die in prison, uh, <laughs> and more than likely he's probably gonna get the electric chair. But yeah, you yeah, know, we yeah. don't want him to die and go to hell. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We as as a good friend of mine would say, you know, why why live here and go through all this hell and then die and then go to hell? That's just way Amen. too much hell. That's Amen. way too much Amen. hell. Amen. All right, mm-hmm. I, I kind of want to move on. I want to invite if if uh, those who are listening or uh, uh, want to call in and and to chime in uh, into the conversation and to have your say, um, you can dial six four six nine two nine zero six. Uh, three zero, and what you have to do uh, to chime in is to press one if you want to add uh, to uh, the conversation with um, me and Pastor Ava. If you want to have your say so, so I invite you now uh, to call in and to perhaps you may want to have a question that you want to ask us, um, or you just want to uh, uh, be able to add perhaps to somebody's life. Uh, who may need to hear the word that's in your mouth. So you may have something to add. So just feel free uh, to call in, and uh, when you call in, you must press uh, the number one in order for me to uh, connect you uh, with uh, connect you to us so that you could have your say. But I, I, as, as, as we move on um, uh, in, in, this, in this conversation, that we're having tonight on a very, very important and powerful uh, subject matter, uh, what is forgiveness Amen. about. Um, Amen. I do believe that um, God uh, uh, rejoices as we grow in grace and knowledge um, in all areas of our lives. Um, Amen, Pastor. And, Amen. And that's what he wants. He wants us to grow in areas of our lives uh, so that we can become um, a more perfected body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, so as as we press on, I, I didn't see any any lines lit up just yet. Um, I want to I want to just lay out a couple things. Um, what are some of the myths of uh, about forgiveness? What are some of the myths? So I'm gonna name a couple things, and you may want to get your pens. Um, and I would hope you had gotten your pens early when I t- ask you to draw a picture, draw a picture of what uh, uh, forgiveness looked like to you. For that picture still uh, If you haven't done that exercise Again you know Pastor Bridget Typically give out exercises uh, When we have our, our uh, Discussion on Totally Whole um, With with me um, So I um, want to give out a, a couple of assignments As, as do uh, Dr. Rosemary um, so, so Mentioning uh, myths So one of the, one of the myths I want to mention uh, Well one of is um, the myth of forgiveness isn't valid unless um, it's accepted by the offending party. Okay, that 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 that's a myth. That's a myth. Mm-hmm. Um, we should only forgive if we're going uh, to get an apology. 
you hear you hear that, Pastor Ava? I hear um, that. Another an, another myth is forgiveness means uh, you have to reconcile with the offender. Uh, another one is forgiving means that uh, uh, forgiveness means you uh, uh, mean you are saying to the offender you're innocent. Uh, uh, another one is we should only forgive if the person deserves it, and that's where I was when I shared with you how I held on to all of that unforgiveness for all those mm-hmm. years because I felt like the person didn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Um, we should only forgive when the offender asks for forgiveness. Pastor Ava, what say you? Um, I want to chime in on the um the uh, the myth about um we should only forgive um uh uh about the, when the offender um um if we if we're gonna reconcile with the offender. Um and I wanna say this because actually I was talking to uh a group of people uh, uh a little while ago, um and a lady had uh brought to my attention and was wanting my uh uh, uh, uh you know, my views on this, that there was a family member in the family um, who had uh, been guilty of molestation of a, uh, of a child that was in the family um, and, you know, actually had gone to prison and did, did a few years of uh, jail time for it uh, and was out. And, of course, you know, the family, you know, reluctantly kind of, you know, brought him back into the fellowship of the family. Um, but, um, you know, uh, some other family member kind of thought that she um, truly did not forgive um, the fact that you know she didn't trust him with the children, um, and I and my and my response to her was um, just because you forgive a person of an egregious act doesn't mean that you know you have to be buddy but you know buddy buddy with them and, and and you know and go you know to the mall with them and, and get them a Christmas gift. Um, I say, no, you can say, look, I forgive you, um, I love you, but no, you can't watch my kids. You know, um, and, 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 that, and that's not taking back forgiveness, and that's not saying that, okay, well, you know, uh, uh, you know I'm, I'm going to hold a grudge. It, it's just walking in wisdom. You know this person struggles with, uh, uh, with, with a pedophilia, so why would you put your children at risk? Um, you know, so, you know, you can forgive and still, you know, walk in wisdom as it relates to a person's weaknesses, you know. And so so, so the fact that, you know, you, you forgive a person doesn't mean that, okay, that, you know, at Christmas time, you know, you owe them a Christmas gift or they owe you something. You can forgive and still say, okay, I forgive you, I love you, um, but we ain't friends and, you know, we never will be. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Amen. 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 And and that's that's real. That uh-huh. is definitely real. That's definitely real because you know uh, sometimes because of bad teaching, you know, uh-huh. bad counsel, you uh-huh. know, and that goes back again to you know forgiveness without the accountability. You know, putting people you know in harm's way. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. To, to you know to to you know to to find themselves back into that that place. Uh, uh, where where the crime was committed, you mm. see, and so um, that that right there, uh, I see nowhere, um, you know, in terms of 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 teaching whole holistic healing, where that um, becomes a a a guiding point, um, you know, a, a goalpost for for what forgiveness. It's truly, you know, if that's if does that mean, you know, true forgiveness? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as I stated before in our last discussion, uh, there there are sometimes when reconciliation, you know, does come about. I mean, we we, you know, we, of course we know that when Jesus came and and that we receive forgiveness, He reconciled us to the Father. That's true. Um, but but that's also this, you know, the scripture where we talk about, you know, repentance. You know, repentance. Um, confess your sins and, you know, um, you, you repent of your sins and, and God is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. And so, um, you know, we can get in a whole, you know, debate and conversation about that whole piece about forgiveness and repentance, rather. And so, um, 
you know, there are some things uh, you know, that you just you just won't be reconciled. You know, you, mm-hmm. just, you just can't reconcile with. And um, yes, you know, just like you you can't tell you can't tell a, a wife who's been battered and who who's lived in a situation of being terrorized and tortured and and horrified by her spouse. You see, um, and he they gonna near killed her. You see, mm-hmm. and he hasn't got his heel, and there's no turning around for him. But yet, you know, you you've had folks tell him go back. He, he mm-hmm. you, you know he, he said okay, he, you know he's sorry, and all is all is forgiven. And in plenty, you know, there have been plenty cases like that where people have sent folk back, and they end up in their grave. That's true. So that's not wisdom. You see, that's, that's not true. wisdom. There was, that's there true. was Unwi- no, Unwi- there, Unwi- there could be no reconciliation for that. Right, Un- I unwise. We we not get right. back together, baby. It ain't That's gonna be true. back down memory lane. We we not going mm-hmm. there. Mhm, mhm. Okay, we not we not going. You know, we not we not hooking up again. Mm. You see, uh uh-uh. uh, mm. that's that's not gonna happen. There will be none of that stuff. Right. That's we have right. to sever ties completely. So, um, that that's a myth. Um, moving on, I want to talk about the short time we have. Uh, um, what are the, what are the downsides of unforgiveness? I'm going to kind of move through this. We got a couple more minutes on the line. I mean, on on, on the air. So, um, uh, what are what are some of the downsides of unforgiveness? Anger, hostility, mm-hmm. negative a negative mm-hmm. spirit, uh, being pessimistic, um, and even sickness. The downsides. Mm-hmm. These that's are some true. of the downsides of unforgiveness: anger, that's, that's hostility, true. you know, negative spirit, being pessimistic, even sickness. Unforgiveness what are, what does are some of the, can bring ahead, sickness to the body. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and so then, what are what are the upsides of, of forgiveness? Some some recent studies show uh, that people who who are taught to forgive become less angry, more hopeful. Less depressed, less anxious, less stressed, which leads mm-hmm. to a greater physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being. And, mm, and let me amen. quote this here: Mayo, Cl- Mayo Clinic even reports forgiveness is good for your health, and mm. that it produces healthier relationships, mm-hmm. stronger immune system, improved heart health. My gosh. Higher mm-hmm. self esteem and even low blood pressure. Mm-hmm. So you know, some of us got some of that stuff going on. We may want to check ourselves and see what's going on. You mm-hmm. know, make sure that again on that scale, and I use the scale all the time. On that scale, from one to five, you see one being the lowest and five being the highest. Where are you? What's going on with yeah. you with this forgiveness okay. piece? I think people need to, you know, do self-examination um, because if, uh, you know, you come into the press, every time you see someone, you know, that, that did you wrong or did you dirty and, um, you know, every time you see them, you rolling your eyes, sucking your teeth, you know, mumbling under your breath, um, you probably still have some harbored ill will toward them. So you might want to check, 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 check yourself on that. Amen. And so thank you, Pastor Ava. So moving on, some of the steps to forgiveness are identify, acknowledge your feelings about the offense. Uh, Number two, say uh, what wasn't okay about the offense. Number three, don't focus on what will be the offender's response. Mm. When thinking about forgiving, your feelings and emotions start to overwhelm you. Take a step back to pause and reach into your stress management bag and pull out the technique of exhaling and inhaling. All right? And number four, put your energy into being healed and whole. That's why this radio broadcast, thank you, Dr. Rosemary Cook, is called Totally Whole. And then lastly, but it's not the only thing, uh, take back your power to be free by releasing the hurt the offender caused. And as I sum it up, let me say something, uh, let me share something with you that that I heard. 
about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a liberating gift that a person can give to themselves. So thank you, Pastor Ava, when you said earlier about forgiveness, you have to forgive yourself. Amen. All right? Forgiving yourself. And so, uh, Pastor Ava, in the short time that we have, tell us a little bit about your book and how we can support it. Oh, God bless how the you, listening Pastor audience Bridget. can contact you. Thank you, Pastor Bridget. Um, yeah, it is a book, um, actually, that I began working on while pastoring in Philadelphia, uh, and it was published um, earlier this year. Um, and the book, uh, act, I'm sorry, published was the end of last year, uh, 2014. Um, the book is called The Daughters of Z, and actually it's the whole account of uh, Zelopha Had's daughters, his five daughters, found in uh, Numbers chapter 27. Um, and uh, Zelopha had died and left five daughters and no sons. And the law said that women were not allowed to inherit property, were not allowed to be landowners, and they said, what can we do to change this? And so they actually challenged the laws of Moses um, and became victorious, and the book is about their process and their struggle uh, to, be, uh, to, to overcome what they felt was an unjust law. Wow. Awesome. Getting their daddy's inheritance. Awesome, awesome. Wonderful. So how can how can they get this book? How can they contact um, you the if book, they so desire? Uh, yeah, the book is available uh at Amazon dot com, uh Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble uh dot com. Um uh those those two places certainly, you know, I do have the book. Um it's called The Daughters of Z. Okay, okay, wonderful, wonderful. And how can they contact you? Um, they can contact me. Uh, I'm on uh, Facebook, uh, or uh, my uh, email address is um, x2028 um, at ymail.com, and, yes, that is uh, the, the biblical verse, Bible verse and chapter, x2028 uh, at ymail.com, or you can actually – Reach me also as well uh, on Twitter, Pastor Avis at Pastor Ava C on Twitter. Thank you, Pastor Ava. We appreciate you sharing with us tonight, and may the blessings of the Pastor. Lord uh, be you, upon Pastor. you and add up no sorrow and make it rich in your life. God bless you. Thank you so kindly for sharing with us. Well, I'm about to sign off, and if those of you who would like to contact me, you can reach me via email. Living It Up Ministries, and that's living without a G, it up ministries at yahoo.com, or you can send me a, uh, a friend request uh, to my Facebook. That's Pastor Bridget Goings Gray. Hopefully I'll hear from you, and um, you'll join uh, with us again uh, uh, next week, and I'll be back in two weeks. Until we meet again, I say to you, beloved, uh, stand strong and stay positive and live life the way God has promised for us to live. Amen. Peace and blessings be unto you. God bless. And, And do check out our promo. Welcome to the Family Healing Circle, where we heal your mind, body, and your soul. Every Monday, it is totally whole with Pastors Bridget and Pastor Cook. Every Tuesday, it is the old school mix with the world famous DJ Davey D playing the hottest old school R&B, hip hop, and reggae mixes around. Every Thursday, there's something new just for you. The first Thursday of the month opens with total empowerment with... Angela Hardy of Simple Wellness Hair and Day Spa. The second Thursday of the month is Reverend Arlene Cahat and Reverend Harvey L. Bailey talking about relationships. Get your relationship questions answered with one love, one connection, one us. The third Thursday of the month is Reverend Jamel Gilliam with The Man Show. It's time to man up with the brother himself, Reverend Jamel, on The Sacred Masculine. Every fourth Thursday of the month, it is 
the inner consciousness with Reverend Harvey L. Bailey. It is the self-help show. And just for you, we have a special. On the fifth Thursdays of the month, we have Arlene Cahet coming back with Healing Paradigms. And she's going to offer you all the healing that you need. On Sundays, we have Updraft with the delightful Deletta Gillespie. You won't want to miss an hour or a minute or a day on the Family Healing Circle, where we heal your mind, body, and soul.